Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Today we're talking about the five reasons that Bitcoin will go to the moon and cryptocurrency is the future of everything. Talking about it right here in this video, so make sure you guys stay tuned. What's going on guys? Patrick here live from the Bitcoin headquarters of the universe on the beautiful island of Oahu in Hawaii. I want to talk about Bitcoin today and talk about the five reasons that I believe that Bitcoin will reach astronomical prices in the future. Now, I know you can laugh all you want and you can comment below how I'm so full of it and I just trying to promote my bags. But if you actually watch the video, you might come to the same conclusion that I have. So that simple idea here is inflation. I think this could be really one reason alone that people should believe that Bitcoin will reach astronomical prices in the future because inflation alone. Now, people might say, well, you know, the Fed is controlling inflation and it's all good, good, good. But you got to ask yourself one question. When the government just prints and prints and prints and prints U.S. dollars like never before, why is it that inflation is still on target to hit their numbers? I believe that inflation is obviously much higher than the Fed and the government is saying it is. If you look at the price of consumer goods, you look at the price of food, you look at the price of gas, you look at the price of pretty much everything these days, the prices of these things are skyrocketing, especially if you look at the housing market. The housing market prices are going to the moon based on what? Demand? Overnight, there's more people in the world trying to buy houses? St. Louis Fed President James Bullard says that the U.S. Central Bank needs to begin tapering discussion, that he is warning that inflation could be a lot higher than expected in 2022. And that's not just me saying it, it's actually the guy. The second reason that I believe that Bitcoin will hit astronomical prices, number one, is of the supply. Now, Bitcoin has a maximum supply of 21 million, which sounds like a lot, but it's not. When you think about how many people are on this planet, there are billions of people on this planet. So if every single person on this planet wanted to just buy $100 worth of Bitcoin, well, you can do the math and you can see the possibilities here, the idea of scarcity. And we've also seen with human beings in the past that humans like to collect rare things like gold, like Beanie Babies like Pokemon cards and all of these things that have value. We've seen Pokemon cards sell for millions of dollars recently because of all the hype around collectibles and things like that. But if you think about Bitcoin, it is very similar in that aspect that there is only 21 million total Bitcoin ever existing in this world. Now, obviously, we have altcoins and other cryptocurrencies now as well that are kind of you know adding on to the supply in the overall picture. But in general, we've got to focus on the actual supply of Bitcoin. Now, I know that people have talked about this idea before, but when you think about Bitcoin having 21 million total supply, there have been millions of Bitcoins lost forever. And you might say, well, how have they been lost forever? In the past, when Bitcoin first came out, it was very cheap. You can see back here in 2014, the price of Bitcoin, you know, down there in the $100 area, even in the beginning days of Bitcoin, it was much, much lower, you know, 10 cents. 20 cents. People had a lot of Bitcoin. People had thousands and thousands of Bitcoin. And guess what? They had little hard drives that they stored Bitcoin on. They had different exchanges. A lot of Bitcoin was lost over time. People just did not know how to handle it. They didn't know how to store it. And well, here we are today. And I'm going to go ahead and say that I believe that there is at least, at least 2 million Bitcoin lost forever. So with that idea, we can now basically take away 2 million Bitcoin total from the maximum supply and we would have 19 million total Bitcoin. So Bitcoin scarcity is only going up with time. The third reason that I believe Bitcoin will go to the moon here at some point. Now, I want to make it very clear that Bitcoin could go down in price first before going to the moon, but I'm totally fine with that. I talked about recently how I believe that Bitcoin could touch down here to the $15,000, $16,000 area or possibly even lower than that. We had that previous resistance there, that yellow line, and you can see right now on the monthly candle, we just had a close there. This candle closed right in the middle, showing that you know the market was indecisive of where the price action was going. We had that dip, we had the push back, 
And right now we are opening right in the middle of that area again. So that $30,000, $32,000 area is very key for Bitcoin. But this is not my third reason. My third reason that I believe that Bitcoin will go to the moon is because of FOMO. We've seen it happen already. We saw Bitcoin back in November of 2020 start to rise. And you can see very clearly what FOMO is on the chart here. As the price rose, the price started to accelerate and started to move faster and faster to a higher price level without really any reason other than FOMO. People could have been buying, you know, back there in 2020, they could have bought Bitcoin for $3,000, but instead people had FOMO and they started buying when it hit 30, 40, 50, $60,000. And you can see those candles. We had a move back in October of 2020. The price went from $9,000 up to $12,000, $14,000 at that point. The next candle opens after that breaking through resistance, it starts to accelerate. We go from 14,000 up there to 20,000. The next move is from 20,000 up there to 30,000. And you can see how the price is accelerating through this move as FOMO starts to take over and everyone says, hey, have you heard about Bitcoin? It's going back up. I might need to buy it at the $60,000 area. Well, that's called FOMO, my friends, and it's very rampant in the markets. We've seen this with stocks, with Bitcoin, with cryptocurrency in general. When these things start to move, they start to move faster and faster and faster. So the idea here is if Bitcoin finds the bottom, we find a bottom, we consolidate. If that happens, I mean, it's going to happen, obviously. But when that happens and Bitcoin starts to make a move back up, guess what? All the FOMO buyers will race in and push the price to astronomical prices in no time. I would believe that we could see, you know, Bitcoin $100,000 by the end of 2022. Some people believe that we will see the price of $100,000 by the end of 2021, but I'm going to be more realistic and I'm going to say that I would be looking for Bitcoin to be over $100,000 by the end of 2022. Now, this is obviously not financial advice by any means, so please only invest money that you're able to lose. And that goes with anything, stocks, Bitcoin, futures, whatever it is, whatever it is, buying a house. At the end of the day, Every asset that you're buying, there's a chance that that could depreciate in value and you could lose money. So please be careful. Only invest what you're able or willing to lose when it comes to these types of investments. And on that note, if you guys haven't checked out crypto.com, it's the world's fastest growing crypto app. That's what I use for buying Shiba Inu and all of the dip here recently. Check them out. It's crypto.com. You can download it right to your iPhone. They got a really easy to use app. You can buy right through there with credit cards. You can transfer US dollars and move stuff around. You can stake on there as well. And they've got a lot of different options to buy different cryptocurrencies. There's a link down below if you want to check them out. You can earn I think like $25 and then I get $25 and we all win, win, win if you, you know, sign up with crypto.com. All right. So the fourth reason that I believe that Bitcoin will go to the moon is because of world adoption. We've already seen different countries talking about Bitcoin. El Salvador adopt Bitcoin. We're going to start seeing more and more countries coming out of the woodwork saying, hey, Bitcoin is a real thing. We're going to adopt it. We're going to use it as a tender and it's going to become a really kind of mainstream currency in these countries and over time more and more countries again with the FOMO more and more countries will start to adopt Bitcoin and the people will start to adopt Bitcoin if you look right here there's 7.8 billion people on this planet there's only 19 like I said there's only like 19 million total Bitcoin so 7.8 billion people if they all started buying Bitcoin trying to get Bitcoin if they try to do that well that would obviously increase the price tenfold, a hundredfold more on Bitcoin because of the scarcity and also just because how many people there are on this planet. And again, like I said, the governments are going to start either adopting it, they're going to start buying it and hoarding it. I think that North Korea is probably holding a bunch of Bitcoin. There's a lot of these countries out there that aren't going to be talking about it, but I believe that there's a lot of countries that will start to hoard Bitcoin because they don't want to be left out in case Bitcoin does go to the moon in the future. They see it as an opportunity, the same way of buying gold. A lot of countries stockpile gold as a reserve. Well, I believe that countries will start to stockpile Bitcoin going into the future as the price starts to rise once again. So the overall idea here is that Bitcoin is still very young in its maturity. It hasn't really become a worldwide phenomenon just yet. And it will get to that point here in the future, just with the simple idea of how many people there are 
on this planet. And my fifth reason that I believe that Bitcoin will go to the moon in the future is simply just because of the market cycle and the idea that Bitcoin obviously goes up big and then crashes down big. It consolidates and then it goes to the moon once again because of all pretty much all the four reasons that we've already talked about. But if we look here, this is back in 2017, 2018 there on the chart. That peak at the time when Bitcoin went from you know $4,000 to $20,000 and it then crashed back down to that $4,000 area, people believed that Bitcoin was done. It was over. The game was gun It was rigged. Cryptocurrency was done forever. Well, you can see that big move, you know, in during that time when we looked back at 2017, you know, in 2019, 2020, that twenty thousand dollar move seemed massive. It seemed like it was the biggest move that Bitcoin would ever have, and Bitcoin was going to just taper off and die. Well, you can see now we broke through that twenty thousand dollar area up there to sixty. What was the high? Only like sixty five thousand dollars. And obviously now we're pulling back here, which is totally fine. We could buy more, buy the dip kind of opportunity here. But in general, when you have that massive move and then it pulls back, people start to think, okay, you know, it's over. Bitcoin's done. It's going back to zero. The world, you know, it's it, everyone's over Bitcoin. The party has ended. Well, same thing with 2017. You had that massive move. We had the consolidation. And then we had the massive move higher after that. So I would say that if Bitcoin, you know, pulls back down here, $20,000, $15,000 area, we get that consolidation. The next move over $68,000 in general would put us above $100,000 easily. So Bitcoin breaking over $20,000, which was the previous high in 2017, it then made a 200% move higher which some people believe that we are still in a bull market and this has not been the end just yet of this cycle. But, you know, for realism here, for just, you know, focusing on facts or at least focusing on percentages here, when Bitcoin pushes above 20,000, it rises 200%. If this cycle would continue, we break above $65,000. Well, where do we go from there? A 100% move over 65 would obviously put us above 100,000. A 200% move would put us up near $200,000, which again seems very, very unrealistic. But when you look at the chart and you look at the market cycles and you see how Bitcoin has done this multiple times, I mean, probably four or five times in the past, when this has happened so many times, you got to think to yourself, well, maybe there's a pretty good possibility that this cycle repeats again because of all the things that we've already talked about with FOMO, with scarcity, with inflation, and all of these things are running rampant. So there's my five reasons that I believe that Bitcoin will go to the moon in the future. It might touch down back down to earth to refuel down here at the 15, 16, $20,000 area again, which I'm totally fine with my friends. Totally fine. If that happens, I would be very, very excited to buy more. At the end of the day, we are looking for opportunities to invest when other people are looking to run out the door and sell, sell, sell. I'm looking to buy, buy, buy. And I've already started to buy, buy, buy recently, but I will continue to buy, buy, buy more because at the end of the day, if we do get a consolidation and the market does move sideways for a while, that's creating opportunity to be buying and kind of slowly building a massive position for the next bull run above $100,000 on Bitcoin. And like I said, I do believe that Bitcoin will reach $100,000 in the future. It just might be a little rocky and bumpy ride until we get there. If you guys haven't already, do me one big favor. Hit that like button, subscribe button, all the buttons down below. I will talk to you guys later on.